My name is Juja Simil Ube, the International President of Young Disciples International. And by the special grace of God, I'm also the Senior Pastor of Great House Minded Church. The ministry of YDI started a couple of years ago. Uh, when I was in business and also the youth pastor in Winners Church, uh, I think late 1994, I started having a nudge in my spirit to reach out to young people because I have been a pastor of young people within the framework of the church, Winners Church or Winners Chapel as far back as from 1987 in Kaduna, I've been reaching out to young people. And um, I remember vividly that when I started having the nudge to start YDI, I went to meet with my father and the Lord Bishop David Oyedipo, that um, I would crave his indulgence to have me go out there to make impact in the world of young people. That it's wonderful to reach out to young people within the church framework, but that it will be more glorious to also carry the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to the streets, to wherever young people are, secondary schools, universities, to reach out. And he said to me, go and document your vision. And so I went and documented the vision and I went back to him. I showed him the vision. And he was the one that told me, this is a real vision. It's a real ministry. If you're willing and prepared, you can talk to your wife uh, so that both of you will be commissioned. And to the glory of God, on the 31st of December, 1995, my wife and I were commissioned into the ministry of young people. I also remember that 30th of January, 1996, uh, the ministry of YDI was bettered officially. Uh, Bishop Oedipo came to open the doors of the ministry to young people. Uh, from 1996, January, uh, January 30th, God has helped us over the years from one level of impact to another. Yeah, of course, in, in any vision or any project, that you are doing, whether divine project or secular project, sacrifice, sacrifice is a major requirement. What do I mean? Uh, if God calls you to do something, you need to make a lot of sacrifices. I remember that I had to do what I call class suicide. <laughs> what do I mean? You used to be up there and you are starting a new project. You have to calm down, you know, I committed what I call class suicide. I used to be up there, now you have to start afresh. I'm no more going to be in business. I'm starting a ministry, so whatever I've enjoyed as a business person, I will not look at that anymore. So I, I left everything for God. Now, let me give you an instance. The last check, business check, of course, to my company, because I was running, um, um, advertising and public relation um, company called Juhead Communications Limited, number two, Olayemi Street, Suliri in Lagos. The last two checks that I got from my former company, I gave everything, including the, uh, the vehicle that I had, I gave everything to the Young Ministry, Young Disciples International. I remember that I got the, 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 the check from um, PZ. I got another check from uh, FAN, the businesses that I did for those clients. I didn't take anything for myself, apart from the fact that I paid the staff that were working in my company. I paid them and I told them I was starting a new ministry and um, a new work completely, a new project completely. And this one is not a business where you have profit coming in. So if they are willing 
to believe God like me, they could join. If not, they should find their way. And um, some of them had their meetings and then they came to say, Sister, God did not call them to ministry, that they came to work for money. And since the company was closing down for ministry, they were going to go. So they were paid off and everybody went their separate ways. But I continued in the ministry that the Lord has given. Yes, at the beginning, it was rough, to be honest with you. It was rough. Uh, I remember it was difficult to pay my children's school fees. And I also remember how God, you know, saw me through. So it, you cannot do any ministry, you cannot do any project without one level of sacrifice or the other. Wow, it's a tall dream. I have the vision that young people in Nigeria be impacted positively. Because what we see today, our young people have not been truly impacted. Um, this is my 33 years working with young people. I started out in 19... 86 after my university i started reaching out to young people in 1986 from 1986 till now this is 2019 uh, that's about 33 years ago and i can tell you that young people children teenagers young people have been neglected i came up with a book a couple of years ago titled Child Neglect. Is the church guilty? Most people are not interested in reading such books because they don't want to accept responsibility for the neglect of young people. So I have a vision that our young people be well catered for. That our young people be well provided for. That our young people be well brought up. Okay, let me give you an instance. There's what they call uh, BB Africa. That is Big Brother Africa. That, I don't know whether it's finished now, it's still running, I don't know. That is a glorified, that program on television, national television. That's a gl glorified pornography. The price tag there is 60 million naira. What do they do there? There's no level of impact. They just gather these young people and put them in that place. People sleep, people kiss, people do all manner of things in that. And Nigerian youths, they watch. They watch those programs. So you can see somebody, a young person, desiring to go win 60 million by promoting pornography. Glorify pornography. So why will you now blame them when the government approves such a program? So I have a vision to, 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 to change the status quo. I have a vision to, to, to bring about positive impact in the life of our young people. For instance, education. We run a school here, by the grace of God, called Witty Class Academy, because you just have to change them from cradle. Our young people are not interested in school anymore. We should ask ourselves. And the reason is obvious. People out there, people in government, people in business, they are not interested in reaching out to young people. If they're reaching out to young people, it's for their own business interests. Because they know that teenagers can spend anything and they are moved by what they see. They don't want them to, to be educated because the moment a young person is educated, he will know his rights, he will know his, uh, uh, yes, his rights, his privileges, and he can ask questions. But our young people are not going to school. Now, let me give you an instance. Many of these young ones, you ask them, do you want to go to the university 
and they would now tell you, yes, I don't really want to go to university. Why must I go to university? There are people out there who have not been to university and they are in places. So why trouble me? I don't want to go anymore. There are so many instances we can cite about people, young people who are not uh, thinking about their future. So we, handlers of young people, God has helped us over the years to tell them that there's place in education. So you don't go to university, you don't earn um, a degree just because you want to um, you want to work. There's no white collar job anywhere anymore. But you go to school so that you can be exposed. You, have, you, you just have to be knowledgeable. You have to be highly informed. Have you ever seen young people write things these days? Some of the graduates cannot write good letters anymore because the society is not helping them. The family is not helping them. The church is not helping them. The government is not helping them. So I have a vision to be a positive force in the world of young people. And to the glory of God, God has been helping us you know, to make that. Several young people out there that God has privileged us to impact, they can testify to what God has uh, helped us over the years. First of all, before I uh, uh, talk about that, I just came up uh, a couple of uh, days ago with this book, uh, Problem Solving Skills for Teenagers. Having worked with teenagers over the years, I know that they have a lot of problems. So to celebrate my 58th birthday, I decided to come up with this book by the leading of the Spirit of God. Of God. Problem Solving Skills for Teenagers, Empowering Teenagers to Solve Their Own Problems. If teenagers can solve their own problems, the society will be at peace. The families will be at peace. The government too will be at peace. But if they cannot solve their own problems, if they are frustrated, they will vent their anger or their frustration on the society. And we can see that all happening. A couple of days ago, I was reading about how teenagers are into armed robbery. And that's... That, that's painting a big picture of doom for this country. It's not supposed to be so. If young people are not well educated, well educated, well trained, well groomed, they will not be able to add value to the society. So my greatest desire is to impact them. And then young people, I just want to say that you are the architect of your own destiny. Don't look at your mother, don't look at your father and say your father is the reason why you're not making progress. Or your mother, your father, your friends are not the one, uh, I mean, they are the one making you not to make progress. No, don't think like that. No one is the architect of your destiny. You are the architect of your destiny. So my counsel, my, my candid advice to you is that you should accept responsibility for how you end. There are people, young people out there who don't have fathers, who don't have mothers that turn out good, turn out great. And there are teenagers that have good parents that turn out bad. So what does that mean? It means clearly that everyone can decide his future. So if you're a young person listening to this uh, interview or listening to me, I want to advise you accept responsibility for your greatness. If you want to be great, if you want to be successful, if you want to be anything in this world, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The Bible tells us we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. If you are a child of God, God will strengthen you. God will strengthen you. God can help you become anything you want to be. I tell people, that the Pastor Joe that people talk about and celebrate today, that if not for Jesus Christ, you wouldn't have known me, 
I wouldn't have become the international president of YDI. I wouldn't have become the senior pastor of uh, Great House Mandate Church. I wouldn't have become a proprietor of Witty Class Academy and all the other things that God is helping me to do. I wouldn't have. At the age of 17, I met the Lord Jesus Christ. I organized a particular party and there was this girl that I invited, a teenager like me, I invited to this particular party who did not come for that party. And I went to her house with one of my friends called Daniel to go harass her. Her name is Rose Anthony, but she's married now. As we got to her place and I started harassing her. We organized a party. We wanted you to be in that party and you didn't come. What was the problem? And she said, oh, Joe, sorry, I will explain, Dan, sorry, I will explain. And at the end of the day, she explained to us, say, yes, when I went back to school, I got saved. I got born again. And I cannot come for that kind of party. What would I tell Jesus if Jesus had met me in that kind of party? Oh, you, Joe, uh, Dan, if Jesus had come, what would you say? Right from there, she preached to us and we gave our lives to Christ in her house. We went to make trouble for her, no, I mean, because she did not come to our party. Jesus arrested her, us in her house. And from that time, talking of 1978, from 1978 till date, God has kept me going in the Lord. So I, my candid advice to young people out there is that Jesus makes all the difference. If you want to matter in this world, if you want to be positive in this world, if you want to add value to lives in this world, if you want to be a man or a woman of exploit in this world, Jesus is the way because Jesus is the positive force. Jesus is the positive force. So if Jesus is in you, definitely you are going to be a positive force. Are you not tired of the negativities around you? Are you not tired of the wickedness around you? Are you not tired of the evil around you? Are you not tired of, or, 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 of the evil beasts out there? Are you not tired? Will you want to join them? No, you don't have to join them. You have to be different and you can only be different and make a difference. You can only be different and make a difference by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So my counsel, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you too will become a positive force in your school, a positive force on your campus, a positive force in your community, a positive force in the society. God bless you. Thank you so much.